In the latest episode of Jobless Reincarnation, Sophie continues to wrestle with her feelings regarding Rudy. And she also decides to help him try to understand the difference between summoning and teleportation. And this leads to a familiar face that causes him to have a massive panic attack. So to begin, at this point, Sophie's crush is obvious to a lot of people, specifically Ariel and Luke, who don't fully understand why Sophie has held back just telling Rudy who she is. She explains that she fears that he might have forgotten her, even though to my understanding, he mentioned not too long ago that he found out that one of his friends is safe. So I feel like that was a hint that he has some idea, but as we know as viewers, Rudy don't know who the hell Sophie is. Well, he doesn't know that Fitz is Sophie. So maybe she has a point, maybe she doesn't. Well, let's not forget that Rudy did think originally Sophie was a boy before, so could just be history repeating itself. Either way, both Luke and Ariel wish her the best, but it seems that neither one wants to get involved. And even though Luke is Rudy's cousin, it seems that he, again, feels neutral in terms of his cousin getting with Sophie, who he's basically been around for years, or else maybe feeling that his cousin doesn't deserve her. Getting to the second topic, Rudy has hit a snag when it comes to the concepts behind teleportation versus summoning. And naturally, he goes to Vince for help because that's his go-to person. And they decide to take him to you know, the person known as Silent Silver Star. I mean, Silent Seven Star, who is a person in Rudy's homeroom who never shows up. He finds out that that's actually Nanahashi, who is Orsted's companion, who killed him in episode 21 of last season. But we also find out that Orsted brought him back to life because of Nanahashi. And the reason why she advocated for Rudy is because she too is from Japan. To make a long story short, <laughs> after Rudy had his little panic attack when he saw her face thinking that, you know, he might get killed again and also feeling that hole in his chest, he woke up in Sophie's lap and Nanahashi in Japanese explained everything. When a mass teleportation event happened, that is when she came over to this new world. Specifically, she dropped an Asura, eventually got found by Orsted, and spent most of her time with him up until recently. Now, the reason why it's important to note that she came during a teleportation event is because, unlike Rudy, she seems to be some kind of immortal, she's not aging, and at the same time, she has no mana. Meanwhile, as we've seen throughout this whole series, Rudy was reborn, he was given a massive amount of mana, and of course, he, as we've seen, he can get injured and even die. Another thing worth noting about Nanahashi is also that she is the girl who Rudy saved when he sacrificed himself in his own life. And it leads to a lot of questions that of course don't go answered in terms of why did he get revived and brought into this whole new life as a reincarnation while she just got transported. Hard to say, but one thing that she has been theorizing is that between her or maybe even Orsted, they're the reason that this happened. And even though Sophie doesn't understand Japanese, when Rudy and Nanahashi switch over back to beast or human or whatever language they usually speak on this show, and she says that, Sophie comes out of pocket. <laughs> she immediately attacks Nanahashi, but luckily Rudy's able to calm her down. And once all that is done, there's a deal made because Nanahashi's been studying teleportation and summoning and all that stuff all this time. And when it comes to Rudy, he has a lot of mana. So the trade-off is Nanahashi wants to go home. <laughs> She's very afraid that if she changes this world too much or does too much she may get wiped away off of she, her existence will just be wiped out so she wants to leave as soon as possible but she's going to need Rudy's mana to do it in return anything she knows from being with Orsted all the studying she's done for the past who knows how many years at least five she's going to give that on to Rudy now, is it an equal deal? 
maybe, maybe not. Lest we also forget with all the types of research that <laughs> Nanahashi hasn't been able to really experiment with, there's always the chance that Rudy could do a spell incantation that causes a second mass teleportation event. And fun fact, based on what Nanahashi said, at least what Orsted said to Nanahashi, that teleportation event was a once in a lifetime thing. And despite whatever his age is, or rather his knowledge of history, that's not something that's happened before. And while teleportation and stuff like that did happen during the human demon war, it was never to that level. Which leads to wrap up, which is, after all is said and done, <laughs> Sylphie is a little bit jealous that Rudy and Anahashi share something that she can't share with Rudy because she doesn't know Japanese. But with Rudy really pushing that Nanahashi is as much as a victim as they were, and that he doesn't fully trust her, it seems Sylphie kind of takes down the level of jealousy that she has and feels a little bit more secure in her place when it comes to Rudy's heart even if they still haven't had that conversation about who she really is. So, top tier level highlight when it comes to this episode is just all that Nanahashi revealed because it gave us a reminder of how Jobless Reincarnation knows how to do character development and world building all in one episode and do it to a quality that most shows can't in. It also reminds you why this show doesn't have just 10 or 12 episodes but usually goes up to 18 or 20. It's because it knows how to use it, and frankly, it deserves it. For while granted, did everything that Nanahashi said make sense? Did it not leave us with more questions and answers? Yeah, because now there's the question of Nanahashi wasn't the only one in that incident when Moody got killed, so did her friends also get transported to this world? Did they perhaps die while she, thanks to Austin, was able to live? It's good things to ask, and also, what about that one event allowed for this all to happen? Because the way that Rudy speaks, Man God told him that Orsted did it. Orsted is making it seem that he had no parts in this. And so now Nanahashi thinks maybe she did it, but without having any type of mana or any type of idea or knowledge of magic, how in the world would she transport herself from our world to the kingdom of Asura? It's all very confusing in some ways, but at the same time, it's the kind of confusing that gets your wheels turning, so it's a good thing. With that said, the second highlight is just how this show is able to juggle having so many characters. Because at this point, there's a slew of storylines that, granted, sometimes we wish they would have followed on maybe sooner, because I'm very interested in what's happening with Ares what's happening with Zenith since we have yet to see her since the mass teleportation event. So those are things I'm hoping that maybe during the next stock, which starts in 2024, maybe we can follow up on. But even setting those major ones aside, there's also the question of Ariel's exile and what's going on with that. There's a term on the Great Rat family that we mentioned maybe one or two reviews ago in terms of the Patriarch being executed and how that's affecting everything. But one of the things I try to remember, especially with these last few episodes, is that just because it's not in the front of what they're talking about now, it doesn't mean they're not going to re revisit it. Nanahashi was a character who was just there when Orsted killed Rudy, and now she has a full background. So while, like many people, <laughs> I'm not the most patient person, at the same time, compared to Game of Thrones and a lot of other fantasy shows that we've seen, I feel like Jobless Bianca Nation has a better sense of how to hyper-focus on characters and really allow things to play out in a way that may not be as fast-paced or else get to the point as you wish. But at the same time, it can still keep you very much engaged, even during the more controversial episodes. With that said though, I need this whole Sylphie confession thing to speed up. A part of me understands that after dealing with the trauma of her parents' death, paired with her survival depending on keeping her identity a secret, never mind technically being blackmailed by Ariel in order to 
have some place to stay and get food and everything, in some ways, Sylvie can be considered stunted. But at the same time, acknowledging she hasn't really gotten a chance to date and maturing was based off of her trying to survive. <sighs> oh, and never mind the fact that she's what, maybe her mid to late teens? If she's even 20, I'll be surprised. There still is this desire for them to just have Rudy find out now rather than continue to drag this out. And again, I get it. When it comes to Sophie, it's been established Rudy has sex before, he's dated before, he's fell in love. Meanwhile, she's been stagnant, but I think at this point, especially since we hear Rudy starts, I just want them to pull the trigger. And then what happens, happens. Rudy may decide to fall in love with her and kind of pick up where things left off. He may decide to not. And maybe he confesses that he still wants to be friends but doesn't see her that way. Anything can happen, but I think when it comes to Sophie, her storyline is kind of stuck because not only of the situation she's in with Ariel, but also this lack of communication with Rudy and in order for her to move forward, maybe take an interest in other people, maybe now that she's in a safe environment, get to grow up in a way that's healthy, she needs to get this confession over with. Overall, in what can definitely be feel like a very contained episode, Jobless Reincarnation shows off its ability to build up characters and build up this world in the same time. And while it answers some questions, it also reinvigorates your curiosity regarding all the stuff that hasn't been answered and the, and the multiple new questions you have to ask after Nanahashi broke down her origins, 